In this video I want to talk about this Leica M3 and uh, why I switched to Leica M3. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulantop. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador from Helsinki, Finland. And in this video I want to talk about the legendary M3, Leica M3 and how did it feel to shoot some film after a very very long break. And this may sound a bit weird because uh, not so long ago I made a video where I explained uh, why I don't use film anymore. And by the way, if you are wondering why this is black and white, I thought it would be appropriate for this unplugged episode where I was using an old film camera and I shot black and white film. Film photography is nothing new to me. I used film for about 20 years as a professional photographer. But I stopped using film professionally in uh, about 2003 or so and as far as I can remember I haven't shot any uh, film after that. I have tried a couple of times, but I never could finish the role because there was just no fun in there for me anymore. But somehow this spring 2020 seemed like uh, the right time to try again to shoot some film and see if I can enjoy it again. And I started looking for a used film camera. But I had a couple of uh, requirements. I didn't want to shoot any uh, of the current mainstream camera brands like uh, Canon or Nikon. I just felt it's not appropriate because I'm a Lumix ambassador. Those old Canon and Nikon film cameras, some of them are really really great cameras. It's not that. I just felt that um, I don't want to do that. And my other requirement was that the camera had to be a mirrorless camera. And I thought a Leica would be a very good choice. Because today Leica and Panasonic, as you all know, have a lot of collaboration. But unfortunately, used Leicas like, for example, an M3 like this are very, very expensive. And I didn't want to spend something like a thousand euros or even more on a camera because I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy shooting film. So I had to try it first. And luckily a friend of mine agreed to loan his M3 to me. But unfortunately this camera has been standing for a long time. It's not being used. My friend used to be a press photographer, but he's been doing something else for at least um, 30 years or so. And this camera has been mainly standing somewhere on a shelf or wherever and the shutter is a bit sticky and the exposure times are not accurate. However, I managed to expose a roll of film and I got some pretty decent shots. And um, let me now show you some of the pictures that I shot on this camera and then I talk more about this camera and how, my, how I felt uh, about shooting film after such a long break. I hope you enjoyed those pictures. I think some of them turned out pretty decent, even though I had some problems with the exposures because the shutter speeds are not accurate on this camera. And I have to say also that I really enjoyed shooting film after such a long break and I think I'm gonna do some more film related topics on this channel. If you are interested to uh, see that kind of content, please let me know in the comments down below. But how was it to shoot on a legendary camera like the M3? I have owned the M6 before and I have used some of the digital M's. So uh, the experience was not 
totally new to me. And this combination is pretty interesting because there's a 35 mm lens mounted on this camera. And the M3 was never designed to be used with a 35 mm lens without an external viewfinder. The viewfinder in the camera has frame lines only for 50, 90 and 135 mm lenses. So what you see through the viewfinder is not accurate at all. The lens is so much wider than the viewfinder that you just have to pretty much guess your compositions and um, framings. And I have no idea why my friend originally chose this lens with this camera body. This uh, camera according to the serial number is from 1955 and the lens is from the 70s. So both the camera and the lens are pretty old. And the shooting experience is very simple and pure because this is a very basic camera. There's not even a light meter in this, uh, in this camera. There's just the shutter speed, aperture and uh, the manual focus and that's it. And when I was shooting on this camera, I realized that I was uh, paying almost no attention to my camera. And I was observing much more what is happening around me. And when I saw something interesting, I just uh, took the camera and uh, snapped the picture and went on. So I realized that the camera took very little of my attention while I was, uh, you know, walking out there and taking some pictures. And I'm not saying that this is better than modern digital cameras. It's just a different experience. And I don't think I could go back to shooting only film. But it was just um, interesting to see uh, how it felt after such a long break. It was clear from the start that I was going to shoot black and white film and I was going to develop the film myself. Because I think that's the only way to go if you shoot black and white film. There are so many upsides um, in developing the film yourself. You get to choose your favorite developer, you get the lower contrast, the nicer looking grain and uh, so many benefits. And I wanted to use the Kodak Tri-X because it's my all-time favorite black and white film. However, when I saw the price, I decided to look elsewhere. One roll of Kodak Tri-X here in Finland is uh, more than 10 euros. And then I found this Fomapan 400. It's a black and white film made in Czech Republic. And it's only four and a half euros a roll, so I decided to give it a try. And based on this one roll experience, I would say it's a decent film for the price. It's not Tri-X, but it's not a bad film either. And I think I'm gonna shoot a bit more of that uh, film in the future once I get uh, my camera sorted out first, because I can't use this anymore. Uh, because the shutter is uh, just so inaccurate. But anyway, the Formopan 400 turned out to be a decent film, especially for the price. And uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, reviews of the Formopan 400 online and also here on YouTube. So please check those out if you're interested. So that was my first roll of film in almost 20 years. And it felt surprisingly good. I was surprised even myself that I finished the roll and I had good fun. Please let me know if you'd like to have some more film related content on this channel. Thanks again and um, I'll see you in the next one.